Welcome to Eric's Hobby Workshop. Today, I'm going to talk about my favorite tabletop game and why I think it's the best. And that game is Necromunda. So the first thing that I like about Necromunda is that it's really easy to get into. You really only need a box of models and a set of dice. You can start with one of these starter sets like this, which will have two gangs in it, the dice, the rules, and everything you need to get going, plus a little bit of scatter terrain, so it's a really good value. Or you can just get a standalone gang like this. These are about 40 bucks. And then you can find a group of people to play with at your local game store, jump right in that way. I had two of my brothers visit me recently, and over the course of one evening and an afternoon, we were able to put together a gang, paint it, get it ready for the tabletop, set up the table, and have a three-man gang war that was a ton of fun, and the two of them had never played before. I was able to explain the rules as we went, and we had an awesome time. And I think that speaks to how accessible the game is, and that's why I'm making this video. The game itself has never a dull moment. If you've ever played some of the larger tabletop games like 40k or Warhammer Fantasy Battles, sometimes the turns last a really long time. Your opponent is moving an entire table full of models, and if they're the type of person who likes to check the rules all the time or dither about what their strategic move is, you can be waiting sometimes up to like half an hour for your opponent to make their turn, and you're kind of just sitting on your hands waiting for them to go. Uh, Necromunda is not like that. Necromunda has a mechanic called alternating activations. And what this means is it's more like a game of chess. I move a piece, you move a piece. I move a piece, you move a piece. Which is a really huge help because it means that there's only ever a few minutes in which you're idle waiting for your opponent to go. So you're constantly in the action and it really keeps you in the game. The games are also much shorter than a typical war game. A 40k game can last hours. Necromunda games are sometimes done as quickly as 45 minutes or an hour, which really makes them a lot easier to fit into a weeknight, for example. Speaking of gameplay, the basic rules are like this. Each turn, each model gets two actions. You can move, move. You can move, shoot. You can aim and shoot, which will make it more likely that your attack hits your opponent. Shooting in Necromunda is really fun, because you can only shoot at what your model can see, which means you have to get down at table level and look over the model's shoulder and line up your opponent's mini. Stuff like this really immerses you in the game, and that's one of the reasons I think it's so much fun. Another rule I really like is when a model gets knocked down from being shot, if they're within a half inch of a ledge, there's a danger they might fall off that ledge. This is the reason that I made this piece here with this big open vat of toxic waste. <coughs> you can scale buildings to outmaneuver your opponent or to line up a better shot, but it comes with a cost. There's a real sense that you're actually interacting with the table that you play on, and it really makes you feel immersed in the game. And who wouldn't want to feel immersed in the game? Take a look at this table. How many games have you seen played on a table that looks this good? Hmm? Not many. Not many, I bet you. Now, Necromunda takes place in the hive cities of the 40k universe. These are sprawling metropolises piled on top of themselves up to the sky. The population of a hive city numbers in the billions, and they're full of ancient rare technology and neglected slums and industrial complexes and all sorts of other different types of architecture both new and ancient piled on top of each other in a dense warren of cables and girders and pathways. And it's a really cool setting that is unlimited in scope as far as your imagination can go, which means that you can customize your table exactly the way you want it. You could use official Games Workshop kits, you could use third-party MDF kits or plastic kits. There are paper kits I've even seen where you fold things together in a way that stays together. You could 3D print your own terrain, or my favorite, you could scratch build your own terrain. And there's a ton of tutorials on this channel for scratch built sci-fi buildings that you can use for Necromunda. And I'll link a playlist below in case you're interested in that. And you can even combine these methods and just keep adding to your terrain collection as you go. If you're just getting started, you can use books or shoe boxes or anything like that just to add a little bit of line of sight blocking and some height to your thing. But it's really gratifying and fun to build up your table as you get into the hobby and then to add to it with each subsequent project, which is what I've been doing on this channel for the past couple of years. 
Many of the pieces on the table that you see here were built from cheap and easily available materials, and I'll put a link to tutorials for these projects in the description below. In terms of setting up the table itself, you can set it up in a flat layout that sort of simulates a tunnel complex or the pathways inside a ship or something like that. Or you can do what I like to do and have a ton of really tall buildings with bridges and gantries gapping between them. And this really gives a sense of the underhive setting the way I imagine it, which is you're constantly going under things. You're, there's a feeling of industrial growth and decay up above you for as far as the eye can see. The average citizen of Necromunda, according to the lore, never even sees the sky. They see the ceiling of the dome above them with pipes and conduits and wires hanging down, and they toil endlessly in this industrial, apocalyptic, dystopian hellscape where life is cheap and gangs battle for supremacy in cutthroat turf wars day to day. It's such a vast setting that you can have so many different things happening. If you like a sort of futuristic cyberpunk vibe, you can go that direction. If you like a really gritty favela shantytown vibe, you can go that direction. If you like industrial Edward Bertinsky type contaminated landscapes, you can go that direction. You could build a sump swamp shantytown that's half submerged and filthy polluted runoff. You could build an uphive palace that's made out of marble with the stars through the windows beyond. You can do anything you want, really. Now, I'm not gonna lie. One of the reasons I have for making this video is I'm trying to convince my wife to play Necromunda with me. And I even made her a gang of lovely Escher ladies that I painted up for her. And I think they look pretty awesome. So you guys could do me a favor by going down in the comments and helping me to convince my wife by encouraging her to battle against me. And who knows, if she uh, is convinced, then maybe I'll do a playing Necromunda for beginners game or a battle report with my wife. Um, so please help me peer pressure my wife down in the comments below. Speaking of which guys, some of you may know that I am now working on this channel full time and my wife is pregnant with our first child. And that due date is coming up really soon. So if you've ever thought about supporting the channel, now is a really great time to support me over on Patreon or and this is a pretty cool announcement. We just launched our first Eric's Hobby Workshop merch. So you can see that linked below as well. As you can see, there's a new channel logo. We got some spiffy hoodies, we got t-shirts. We think we're gonna do mugs as well and there's more stuff coming in the future. So if you enjoy the content I make, please pick up a shirt below and become a patron because it would really help me out to keep making this kind of video and I appreciate you guys so much. So one of the other really cool things about Necromunda is the campaign system, which gives each match a special feeling of stakes and context. In the Dominion campaign, you fight for territories like gambling dens or toll bridges that give your gang uh, an extra source of revenue or some special rules or ability. And over the course of your campaign, you start to feel strangely attached to your gang. Some will level up and get better abilities and equipment and weapons and others will face disfigurement or capture or even death. And it's not a problem because a you can't have a good dystopia without child soldiers, right? So there's always new recruits to be had from the teeming slums in Necromunda and your gang will change and evolve as the campaign goes. And each gang kind of becomes part of an interactive story that you feel like you're living as you play it and it's a blast. I like to personally name each one of my gangers because it helps you sort of keep track of their character and all the things that happen to them. And you'll find that just the way the dice end up working out, one of your gangers will end up having, you know, a constant streak of bad luck. And one of them will always make the shots that they take. And one of them will always fall off the ledges and be clumsy. And they'll start to develop these sort of personalities and character that sort of extends way beyond just the standard stat line and it really helps to feel like a rich narrative game that drags you into it and just gets you so interested and excited to play the next one. So there you have it guys, that's why I like Necromunda. My goal with this video is really just to try to broaden the player base of this game because it's fairly niche. I mean, there is a good community and there are a lot of people into it, but I'd like to see it get bigger. You know, I was dimly aware of Necromunda for many years. When I was younger, I would flip through White Dwarf magazines and see these pictures of Necromunda and not really understand what it was, but I kind of always thought it was cool, the, the guys walking across gantries and platforms towards each other. 
and I never really understood how immersive and cool it could be or what the setting was all about until I played a campaign at my local hobby store in the neighborhood I used to live in. And so I encourage everybody who's watching this video to go down to your local hobby store and to ask around and see if there's a group of people who would be interested in doing a Necromunda campaign. It's, I think, some of the most fun that you can have in the tabletop wargaming hobby, and I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. So huge thank you to all of my patrons who support the channel. Please like and subscribe below, and please leave a comment encouraging my wife to play with me. And that's all for today, guys. We'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.